I got to tell you, I've had more fun on my heritage than probably any other site. Okay, that is, it's just a fun place to learn about your DNA. Okay, now I don't know. Let's see if that'll go. Hi, I'm Harry Easton Ross. I'm happy for this opportunity to tell you a bit about myself and my family. My story started on the 9th of October 1881 in Mount Hope, Ohio. I was baptized in Holmes County, Ohio. My father John H. Ross was born in 1853 in Mount Hope. My mother Ida May Kelly was born in 1857 in Holmes County. When they married in 1879, my mother was four years younger than my father. I married my sweetheart Nettie May Mick on the 26th of October 1907, at age 26 in Canton, Ohio. That was a day to remember. She was born in 1885, in Stark County, Ohio. She was 22 years old when we married, four years younger than me. I want to introduce my granddaughter, Marty Flanagan. She has been busy on my heritage finding my DNA matches and building our family tree. What is really important to have the most fun are, build your tree, have several family members test from both sides and watch all the videos that my heritage has provided but most important have fun. Next learn how to search by surname, search by ethnicities, understand genetic groups and shared locations. A very important fact is keep track of the matches. My suggestion is to use Excel. How fun to take an ancestor photo and bring it to life. I'm turning the class back to my granddaughter but a final word, I'm glad I shared my life story with you. I hope you enjoyed watching. Farewell, love and kisses. Is that not cool? <laughs> now, I told you, I use my heritage for fun. And, and to me, that was really fun. This is a picture of my uh, grandfather. Of course, I never did meet him. He died at a very young age. He was involved in a train injury that he was burned. So it was pretty severe. But I used this technique. We had a family reunion on my mother's side out in Oregon this year. And I used the talking heads to tell the story. I call them talking heads. The talking heads to tell the story. And you know what? Oh, everybody was just like this. If I'd have been up there talking, they would have. So I've decided that my next thing is I'm going to get one of my talking heads to start talking about DNA and I could just stand up here and enjoy it. But is that not cool? Yeah, anybody can do that. Not hard. Um, you what the what you do is you um, you know pick out a good picture. You want a good headshot because it's gonna and then you can pick out voices. Um, you can um, do uh, fast or slow. You know, like if somebody has a faster accent, you could speed it up. You can get different motions going with the head so you can kind of play with it really easy to do and then then you just let my heritage put the story together and then when you get it then you can go in and edit it so I edited all the stuff you know that's my words that he was speaking after I took out what my heritage put in but really easy to do just type that's it I have no idea. Uh, I know. I don't know how they do it. It's it's amazing. Um, I even noticed how they move the eyes. You know, they're blinking. You know, like you would if you were talking, your eyes are going to blink. I mean, they've just they made it. In fact, the first time I saw it, I was like. Oh, this is kind of bizarre. You know, you had to kind of get over that. But now I'm all, I'm all into it. Yes. Someone to know? To see? Just they, out of curiosity, how close? Yeah, there's one of their things is they don't do living people. Oh, okay? so they know who these people are. Well, they're in my tree, so they know he's dead. So I guess you could put this person in your tree give them a death date and make them dead. And then you could probably do it. But that's just, you know, a little bit bizarre, maybe. <laughs> but you can have fun with your dead, dead ancestors, I can tell you. All right. So 
what family or my heritage does really well. It also gives you a great deal of learning tools that are totally free. You can make a MyHeritage account, not test DNA or anything just to learn about it, okay? You can do, it does family event stats, it does family trees, you can import a DEADCOM, and it has a consistently consistency checker, which I hate, clearly hate it, because it finds all my mistakes, <laughs> and I have a few. Um, and basically, it's because I put a record there after the person's dead. Like, I'll put, like, a um, son's death certificate, but it lists his dad as his name, so I add it. You know, something like that. Well, it doesn't like it. It wants to kick that out, so I have to go in and, you know, manually manipulate that data. It gives you discoveries many different ways about your family and people that you match. You can, they have a new tool called Photo Tagger. Um, it, they'll, they'll do colorized photos, enhanced photos, emanate photos, and your deep story. What you just saw was a deep story. Now I could do an emanated photo without the deep story. You know, if I just wanted him to have up there moving. I didn't, I thought that was pretty, not good, great. Didn't appeal to me. I, you can colorize photos. If you have any photos from the 60s, you can run it through their, their colorized process and it'll look like it's, it's just taken yesterday. Very, very good photo editor that they have available. Um, DNA, they give you lots and lots of tools, different from all the other testing companies I've talked about today. They have ethnicity matches, ethnicity tools, manage multiple trees and DNA kits, and research education online. They have videos, PDFs, resources from the world. My Heritage is a world-based DNA company. They have more DNA testers from Europe than any of the other companies have. So if your ancestors go back to Europe, you know, and that includes Israel, any of that whole broad Europe bag, then my heritage is a place you need to be. This, you can, this is important. Um, hopefully someday they'll change it, but right now you can only have, you can have a free tree if it only is 20, 250 people. That's important. I started out that way. Uh, I put my 250 people in. I had to take people out, you know, because I wanted specific people. So when I finally got that pretty good, then I did my DNA. Um, the DNA, I'm, you know, linked to my tree, and I love their tools. But if you want to go further, then, of course, you have to pay. So um, I've been a paid subscriber now for about two years. Now. I can go in and out of Ancestry. I have never actually got the data that I have on my heritage now and then not have it. So I don't know what's gonna happen when I decide to take a break from them, if it'll still be there when I come back. They tell me it will, but I, I don't wanna leave you with an idea. Everything costs money. All right, so you can import a DEADCOM. You know, we talked about downloading your family tree from Ancestry as a JEDCOM. That JEDCOM can be moved right up to them. So right now, MyHeritage has a sale on for $49. And you looked it up. It was November 30th, I think. That one was the one that uh, expired. November 20th. Mm, November 20th. Okay. So they have what's called MyHeritage DNA Kit 30-Day Complete Trial. Um, and what that means is that you have access to the, all the photo tools, eat massage, um, build your family tree, and cover your family history, find new relatives. So anything and everything with my heritage DNA. And if you want to get into the fun tools, then it's going to cost you $49, but it's only for 30 days. So then there's another price that pops on after that. So you have to look at that to see if that's what you want to do. Okay. 
it did say there at the bottom. After 30 days, you will enjoy a 50% discount and be charged $149 for the first year, which will give you um, access to their records that they have. And they are different. They'll have some of the same things that Ancestry has, but not all. There are a lot of new records that they have that Ancestry doesn't have. All right, so when this spatial runs out, let's say in two years when you're complete, the full service now, if you didn't have this spatial going, would cost you $200 a year. So like everything else, who knows what the price is gonna be in another year. All right, so it tells you what to do. It's a simple cheek swap. You don't have to spit a tube. Um, you can order the DNA kit online from your home, send back the DNA. The sample is analyzed in our lab, and it takes about three or four weeks, and it's pretty easy. I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. When I first started it, the testing site was in, um, oh, I think the kit went over to their plant in Europe, and I'm thinking it was like in Germany or something. So they are their home base is... Israel, but they have a complementary um, company that works with them here in the States. So I don't know if they've moved their DNA testing here as well, or if it's still back in Germany. Was there any thought uh, about having any of these DNA kits available here at this weekend? And why, why not? Well, here's the reason. First of all, you have to have companies that be willing to give it to you for free. Okay. And I do think that Sherry was able to get a couple of kids, but I think they're on the drawing. I don't know how that's, will they have like a, you know anything about that? Like if they were going to do a drawing? I don't know if we got ones or not. Okay. But it's all up to the cuss, the company's giving us free DNA tests. Got it. So that's the reason. Okay. All right. So here's the thing about my heritage that they do a little bit different. They call their population testing the founders group. So what they've done, and they're the only ones as far as I know that it's taken it to the step. They go to a area in the world and they have tested all over the world. They go to a place in the world and they are looking for people that have lived in that location for minimum of three generations without moving. They've stayed in that population area or area of a country for three, four generations back. And then they test, you know, the folks. So my Heritage Founder Population Project is, a, is a unique. It's the largest of its kind conducted involving more than 5,000 participants. Handpicked for its project from my heritage, 105 million members and participants were selected based on their family trees and those with consistent heritage, heritage from the same region or ethnicity over many generations were eligible to per permit. So they had two things going. They had this one group and then they went in and looked at their members DNAs who tested to see if they could put them into those founder groups. All right, so this is the stats on my heritage. And the numbers are prioritized in the way that certain companies will draw them out and other companies won't. Ancestry says, I think they're probably up to 23 million right now, but the lattice I'd heard 22. Um, 23 and me, I think it's up about 11 million. My heritage is, as you can see, 6.2 million. Family tree DNA is probably somewhere around a million and a half to 2 million. So that kind of gives you an idea. Yes. It looks like, now I have my DNA already there. Okay. So this may be not applicable to somebody else. Okay. But it's saying the complete uh, $169 uh, with a Veterans Day discount, the total $299 normally. So it looks like the price has already gone up since what you had. Yeah. 
So, that's only good for like another day. Yeah. So the the prices are kind of they're on sale and they're off sale on sale. You know, I'd, I'd say never buy unless it's on sale. <laughs> that's my. Okay, it's supported by forty two um, languages, which can be a real benefit. Because let's say you you find a document that's in German and you can translate that into English on your site, if it's readable. Now, if you've got like old fashioned handwriting, probably, probably not unless it's, you know, just perfect, depending on darkness and you know what. But it does give you an idea because if you're in English and want to translate it to say um, Italian, because you're looking at an Italian document, you want to know how death is said, you could type death in English and see what it looks like in Italian. So it's got a translator there that you can use. All right, historical records, 18.7 billion. Uh, certainly doesn't match the amount of records Ancestry has, but it's a good, their records are more focused in Europe. Again, they have 105 million users worldwide. Okay. Here is the things that you can see. It is a large repository of census, family trees, birth and marriage and death, photos and military. And you can see that you can add details uh, up above here. Those will all drop down and give you additional information that you can get for free. You don't have to have an account. All right. so. We're always looking at ethnicity and I always like to play with it so that people really know ethnicity isn't the big thing that's gonna get you where you need to go, but it can be fun. So here we have, these are the amount of DNA matches I have on my heritage. I've got 8,738 English. I have 10,882 Irish, Scottish and Welsh. Now, remember on Ancestry, I can't do that. I don't, they're all usually basically US. You can't really know for sure. All right, Iberian, I have, let's call it 2000. But then you see the numbers kind of go down, but look at Scandinavian countries. I'm back up to 6,234. Now, remember my little story? I have no Scandinavian ancestors that I've found yet but everything on my DNA says I've got them somewhere. It's just up to me to try to break down those brick walls and get there. So, oops, let's go back here for a second. All right, so it gives you a little bit of um, a uniqueness. Um, you know, they break down um, Jewish ethnicity quite well. They um, break down African, DNA really well. They they do have a good base there. Um, and then you can see that the rest is pretty much European. Uh, but these are the number of testers from these countries that I'm matching, but I don't know what percent of DNA I'm matching with them. That is not there. All right, so then I look at my matches. And what I like about my heritage is Probably the U.S. matches are going to be the same I'm going to find on my other sites in America, right? But I got almost 2,000 United Kingdom. I've got 500 Australia, 400 and some Canada, 251 New Zealand, Ireland 231. So see, it gives me a lot of worldwide connections. I won't have any other place which is really helpful when you're, you know, you know that this is where your ethnicity is leading you to, but you don't have any names. All right, so you can see that they have downloads that you can do to help you with your DNA. They also have lots of videos. They have videos on everything. And my heritage does something a little bit different than a lot of the other companies. Um, how many of you are um, familiar with uh, a company called Family Legacy Webinars? It used to be Legacy Wear, oh, Webinars, but now they, Legacy yeah, Tree. they were bought. Yeah. Okay. My Heritage has something like, 
I don't know, maybe 20 different videos on that site that you can watch for free without being a member. You just make an account, go in and look at the okay. free videos and they're there. But even on their site, you can get all these free webinars to really teach you about your DNA and about their site. They have 32 more videos, so you can see it's a, a large library. Okay, here's the Help Center. Like everything else, you wanna click on all of it and make sure that you uh, have an opportunity to understand everything before you proceed. And the other thing that they have is they give you some really cool charts. So once you get your family tree up there and you go, oh, I know it's pretty good, maybe to the third or fourth great grandparents, et cetera, both sides, you can print some charts. You can customize them. You can make a family book. I mean, just about anything you want to do. And uh, once you are in their system, you know, it's pretty much free. All right. So this is the fan chart. Everybody should have a fan chart. This is the easiest way to get your fan chart. And that is putting a tree on my heritage, right? So then you, you know, that chart group, you go hit fan charts, prints this up. Remember, we were wanting to know who my father got his ex from. So I can go in here and this is his haplogroup. I can put an X, an X, an X, an X, an X, an X, because this person got, uh, got this, got one here, got one here. I can use that X chart and I can mark people's names very easily just by putting a red X and I know what it is. So you don't have to do all that writing. I mean, I think that's pretty cool. You make a fan chart, mark your X's for female and male, you've got it. And, and since my dad's a male, then, you know, it would be pretty easy. All right. They also give you quick ways to get into your DNA. We can do a close family, a extended family, and distant relative. So you can see this is not as much as what Ancestry is giving me as far as family closeness, but this might be breaking down my Irish and Scottish and my English brick walls. And yes, that's me when I was about six. <laughs> now, I recommend that you put some kind of picture there of a person, you know, doesn't have to be the best, but it should, it's easy for my matches to see that and think, oh, this person's real. You know, you want to be real when you're working online. All right. I like this. It's another one of the charts that uh, my heritage gives you. Uh, it gives me a relationship issue. So here is me, my mother, her father, and his mother. So that is a line. So if we were going to look at, this is my great-grandmother. So you can see that it tells you how you're related. It gives you a picture of it. So let's say you have a grandmother, third great-grandmother, but you're not just sure how that lines up with you. You can put her name in there and it'll drop down a chart just like this. So it shows you what your lineage going back to her is. And you can also use it for an X factor because, or mitochondrial DNA. Now on this particular one, I can go, this is the X, this is the X. He would have got the X from her. So that means I share an X with my great grandmother. So it's another way of looking at complicated subjects. I like this. Statistically, how fun is this? Now, I'm sure you're gonna see something right here. There's no way I have a, a living male that's 119 years of age or a female that's 120. I need to mark those two people deceased. It means I don't have a death date on them. But look, I think this is kind of cool. It tells me what my age distribution is. Obviously, I have mostly dead people in my tree. So it tells me, but I could put living people in this and the whole thing would change. 
This is fun. It tells me when people were born, what month. And I couldn't really decide if there was one particular month. It just looks like it's kind of a smidgen of everything. But I did like the zodiac signs. And it's like, if you look closely, it seems like the ones that are right in there were 400, all the rest of them were about 300. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So this is when people were born. It gives you some idea of uh, age range of your tree. Now, they have a chromosome browser, an auto cluster, and an ethnicity map. Okay, here is the ethnicity map. Now, remember, I have a lot of matches on my heritage, and they put like little numbers there. So, like where it says like 18 or 65, that means I have that many matches on that little dot. So, I have to make the map bigger to get to the matches. It also tells me the genetic groups that they've put me in. And that's not a whole lot different than what Ancestry has done. We're having Northeastern, Midwest, Midwestern, Northeast, Northeastern and Midwest and Canadian. So I had those same groups, you know, on my heritage or on ancestry. So here's what's nice about this. This is what a chromosome browser looks like when you compare DNA of one person to another. All right, they're comparing to me. This is my mother, this is my paternal uncle. And this equals her, and this equals him. So you can see how my breakdown, and remember on Ancestry it said uh, the number three and number two chromosome had my Scottish DNA. So I can take this, put it in DNA painter, and then I can identify which one of these chromosomes is my Scottish ancestry. That's the cool thing. So you can see here's three. So you can see I got a full one from mom. I, now my uncle, uh, obviously, it, if this was my father, it'd be a solid match, but he's the closest I've got. All right, so here's another way of looking at your matches. And as far as I know, this is the only company that does this. Do you see this little box around this? Okay, this is my uncle and me, and I don't remember who this person was, but it's related out of this person. I think they're my cousins. What this means is this box around chromosome one, which equals 24.5 centimorgan. Remember I said you wanna work with 20 centimorgans or above. That equals one ancestor. And it's possible to figure out which ancestor that represents. Not by looking, but using all the tools that I have at my hand and all the research. All right, so what it tells me is that I can go in by country and by state and area to see what my matches are looking at like. So I put, Oregon, because you saw that little area, area map that said I had like 65 out there. Well, it's saying that of my matches, this is the breakdown. English, Scandinavian, North and West European, Iberian, and East Europe. So my Oregon matches are going to fit probably in this ethnic, ethnicity background. Okay, this is some of the tools that you can use on that. You can go to Asia, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and it will do the same thing, which is kind of cool if you think about it. Okay, so here we are on Ancestry. And you can see, if you remember my, on Ancestry, my mother shared about 34. I have about 35 on this, all within normal range. Um, every site has a little bit different set of organs, so that's always a clue. So, but I can do it by adding a dot, indicating this is a maternal line. I can add a star if I need to do more research. I can make a note, um, and I can 
do other different things with that. I can re review our ethnicity, uh, shared DNA matches, DNA tools are here. And then I can do by largest or full name or most recent. So I have a lot of options here. All right, this is one of the charts that they give you on each one of your matches on MyHeritage. So you can really kind of figure out how you're matching. So we have me and it shows that my parent, and that's pretty easy, but it gives you Cousinship re, um, matches for other ones. So let's go here. This is a person that I don't know where he fits in my tree. Okay, he's from Ireland, which is exciting. He shares 42 uh, centimorgans. His largest segment is 37. So I'm going to work with him because he, he makes my cutoff. So I can contact him. I can review his DNA, I can view him in a tree, I can see whatever he has to offer. I can see his genetic groups where he might come in. So this is another um, cousin that I picked up from United Kingdom and you can kind of see the same thing. All right, so here's the dot system on my heritage. You know, I named him because I want to try to break them down into cluster groups. So I'm looking for people that match those cluster groups, but I can use the dots. It's kind of like the leads method with colored dots. All right, they have what they call a theory of reality. I'm going to get this up. I don't look right. A reality, re theory of relativity. Thank you, relativity. All right, so what it does is it goes out and looks at all the trees out there. And if their DNA match to me, how, what is their idea of where this person fits in my tree? I'm not doing that, they're doing it for me. So it shows, this is my line to this couple. And here's another line that's going up to here. And here's a 42% match. More than likely, it's the same. I just don't have a the Marvin in there or Melvin in there and probably the death date. And this is his line. And then there's another line I couldn't get on the screen. But it gives you this broad hint that you can use to put people in your tree without doing too much except, you know, looking at their data. All right, so auto clusters. And I'm going to go through this a little bit. This is what their auto clusters looks like. What this is, is a tool that takes your DNA matches and they have to match each other. There's a rhythm and they put them into groups. This cluster 10 or one, cluster one has 10 members. You, I've inked out their names. But what this means is that they all represent either one common ancestor or a couple ancestor. In other words, uh, mother and father, great grandfather, so many generations back. So this is very helpful, especially when you want to break a brick wall. Here, you can see that I have, I think I have 19 clusters, but I had to kind of cut it off here for you to get this, the, the view of this. This is a little tighter view uh, so that you can see what it is. This, this person's Luke, he shares two sets of great grandparents. So that means he has four possibilities of matching. He's gonna be complicated. He's like pedigree collapse. In other words, he has an uncle, two uncles who married two aunts, that were in separate lines, they had children, and he's one of those children that have started to test. So when you have people that intermarry within a small community, you get pedigree collapse pretty soon. And that's what this represents, which means he's gonna share a little more DNA than he would normally for his level. Questions? <clears throat> I burned you out, I'm sure. <laughs>
I just never looked that close at my heritage because I couldn't look at any of the matches. I mean, the records or the confirming matches because you have to pay to do that. Say, I, you might want to jot a note to my heritage and see what it would cost just to be able to um, utilize a couple of their DNA tools without getting the full record um, combination. They did have, I, it was, at one point it was like $70 for all their DNA tools. <laughs> so you might ask them, say, are they, you know, they, every company kind of changes their way of doing business from time to time. And frankly, I, I have not kept up on that. Okay, any other questions? Do you think my heritage would be a fun site to play with? Yeah, it's got a lot of different things that you can do. All right, so if you don't have any more questions, I'm just going to let you go and enjoy the couple of minutes before your next class. Sure.